Okay, our flux circle is almost complete. We have a dispatcher that's dispatching actions to anyone that listens. In this case, that's our to-dos store. And then our to-do store updates itself accordingly and dispatches a change event, which components can listen to if they want to. Now, this may seem like a few too many steps just for a to-do app, but what we've done is we've created this setup to where as our app grows in complexity up to hundreds and thousands of different types of actions, our stores only listen to the actions they care about. They don't have to change. Our components only listen to the stores they care about and only fire off a handful of actions, the ones that they need to. So we've got this highly decoupled framework that's always going to re-render all the time and it's just really, really stable. Flux apps are very, very stable. So all we need to do to finish this circle up is add in our actions. And that's actually the simplest part. Uh, let's go ahead and just create an actions folder. Actions, there we go. And let's create a new file inside of there, which will be our to-dos actions, our to-do actions, .js. So all we need to do in an action is we just have to dispatch something. So let's import our dispatcher. Import our dispatcher and let's start exporting some stuff. You could export an object like that. You could do export defaults and then you could do stuff off this chain or uh, create to do is going to be a function. So you could export a uh, object literal like that. But the ES6 way that's a little cleaner is going to be export create to do. Just define them like this. So that way they'll automatically get a name. And then if you create a to-do with text, we're simply going to dispatch an, an event or an action. We're gonna dispatch this event and we're gonna pass in the text. That's it, we've got our create to-do action. Um, and so let's go ahead and maybe make a second one, delete to-do, which we won't use right now. And that'll have an ID. And this one will be delete to do, and we're just going to pass in the ID. So now we have two methods on that. Let's go to our to do's component, because you remember to do's the component cares about the stores and the actions. That's all it's connected to. So let's go to our to do's component here, and let's import the actions. We've already got the store in there. Now let's go import. There we go, to do actions are in. And let's make a button that simply always creates a new to do. So let's go ahead and make a button here. Create. And then on click, we're gonna go this dot create to do, find this. Let's go ahead and make that now, create to do. And then Let's just always create something with a random timestamp. So in this case, oh, I need actually, we're going to import the star as to do actions. So that way we're basically going to import every single export and it's gonna be just like we did in object literal. You're gonna end up with an object. If you remember from our to do's actions, if you import star as to do's actions, then you're gonna end up with an object that looks like this. You've got your create to do function and then you've got your delete to do function. So that's what the import star is. It's a nice clean way of defining your functions. It's a nice clean way of importing them all. So now all we have to do is go to do actions, create to do, and let's just pass in, <laughs> let's just go date now again. So it'll be just a random timestamp string every time we hit that button. Let's go back to our page. And let's click on that button. There we go. You can see every time I click it, it's adding a new one to the list. Yippee. And that new one will also have a random ID, which will be pretty much the same thing. So now we've created our actions and the circle is complete. It's extremely simple for our to-dos list to handle things. We could easily uh, make this an input. And whenever the button clicks, we're going to grab the value out of the input and we're going to create it to do with that title as well. Very, very simple. We've made the actions. In the next video, let's look at how do we handle asynchronous actions. Like say when I click this button, I wanna to load to-dos from my backend API, and then I wanna spit them out. We're gonna get into that in the next video.